If you think you better than battle. So I think, I think I'm just gonna call it a night. I think I'm gonna call it a night. I'm gonna go home and get some rest and we'll just be back here tomorrow. So. This is ticket talking mother for the biggest. That's a comma and a comma and a comma. Gotta get it, get it. Man, this is ticket talking mother for the biggest. That's a comma and a comma and a comma. Gotta get it. So let's get right into it. Very, very early in the session, and the cutoff is open to $40, which at this point appears to be a standard open. We make it a smooth $110 to go from the button, holding Ace Jack suited, and he wastes almost no time in calling when the action returns to him. Queen, deuce, three with two clubs. He checks and we make a standard C bet with ace high, but closing in on the nut flush. $70. He calls. The turn eight of spades is a complete brick. He checks and now it's decision time. Do I blast off here with a big bet or check and try to realize my equity? Glancing at the villain, he gives us the impression that he isn't going anywhere. And if he's holding a queen, we wouldn't expect him to. Check. The river jack of hearts isn't the club we hoped for, or even our second best option, an ace. It's our third choice. The villain, however, now leads into us for $150. Excuse me? What? I don't believe he has a queen, but I stupidly talk myself into thinking that he has missed a draw, Maybe clubs, maybe a straight draw, maybe a pair draw. Who knows? My brain is telling me to fold, but my dumb hands aren't listening. And before you know it, I've called. I quickly find out that I was right. He doesn't have a queen. He has pocket jacks for a rivered set. Are you stupid? In some strange backwards Jamin way? I feel like I got rivered. Scarcely had I shifted my station when lo and behold, two ebony kings graced my hands. Fortuna's favor has smiled upon me. The procession of play quieted until it rested with the small blind who dared to tender but $10 into the common purse. Such impudence could not endure unchallenged. I, in my exuberance, raised the stakes to $50, and thus the matter was decided. Forsooth, the fickle hand of faith hath frowned upon me. Alas, I must confess, my hopes for a grander encounter were left unfulfilled. For the first hour or so of this game, I couldn't win a hand legitimately. Could not. Any uptick in chips was due to pure larcenous behavior. And I'm fine with that. You had me be. <laughs> you gotta stay afloat some kind of way. In this next hand, the under the gun player has opened to $30, and I find something to fight with in King Queen offsuit. I bump it up to $100, and surprisingly, actually, not surprisingly at all, I get cold called by the hijack. The under the gun player folds, and I head to this flop heads up and out of position. Eight, four, deuce, rainbow. Not much going on here for myself. Check. The hijack slides $100 into the middle, and my subsequent fold keeps my streak alive. I still can't win a legit hand. Well, back to preflop aggression and thievery for sustenance. Uh, start the party. If you want a good time, better call me. Meet me on the dance floor with your body. I can tell you when the mood on me. Hey! Amazing. 
Not too long later, I find myself in a situation in which the hijack has opened to $30, the cutoff has called, and the button is in the process of calling as I peek down at the number one unpaired, non-suited, overhyped, overvalued, let's go broke and feel justified, never connects with anything at any point, anywhere, ever, piece of shit hand in all of poker. Ace King. Specifically, Ace King offsuit. Three callers in front of me and... I must raise. From the small blind, I make it $200 to go. Pretty quickly, the hijack gets out of there. The cutoff, though, he's going nowhere. He makes the call, and the button folds. The cutoff calling makes little sense. If his hand was so great, you'd think you'd have just raised when the hijack originally opened, right? Be that as it may, once again, off to the flop, heads up, and out of position. Jack six four rainbow. Of course it is. Of course it is. I refuse to let the fact that I can't catch a decent flop today deter me though. We continue for $170 and the cutoff tanks for a while in calls. The turn deuce of spades is of no help at all. Like none. So now we have to decide. Do we just blast off into this guy in hopes that he has the sense to fold pocket nines? Or do we just give up on this one unless we improve on the river? We choose the latter. Our check is met with an insta check from the cutoff. I mean, he didn't even think about betting. The river five of diamonds is about as much to help to me as that turn deuce was. Zero. A one liner to a straight is on board, which neither of us should realistically have. Again, I'm pretty sure the cutoff probably has a pocket pair and isn't going to let it go without a bomb coming his way. I'm not going to try to bluff this guy here. Check. There's a slight pause and he checks it back. I turn over my ace king high and he just mucks his hand. Your guess is as good as mine. What was your comment the other day about a table full of good players or something? Guy asked if I was vlogging. I said, no, I only vlog good players. I mean, are you recording right now? Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> But like very few hands ever like they're just yeah, not that one. yeah. most like you know like most most poker hands are like this one like ace queen versus a six and it's just check 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 like it's nothing that hand that we played with her oh my god that's magical that was a magical hand all you, all you have to know is i all you have to know is i flatted the cutoff with queens and then craziness ensued on the nine high flop in your defense was in that hand so like yeah, so like all bets are off. Like, yeah. I would never usually flat that, but I was. Yeah. Like, and then I got. Like, when it's in the hand, like everything is just like whatever. The next hand begins with an early position player limping for $10. From the hijack, I deem a raise is necessary and do just that with Queen Jack offsuit. The big blind calls and the limper comes along as well. Dream flop. Ace, Queen, Jack, Rainbow. Both villains check it over to me. My range here is uncapped. As the original Razor and not facing more aggressive action from my opponents, I have all the good hands, all the sets, all the two pairs, even the straight. I have it. They don't have all those hands. They may have some, but not all. I have all. I bet $100 because what are they going to do about it? It would be great to get a call from a weak ace, but both fold. I was a scary one. I was scared there. I was legit like, Jesus. I got the end of messing around. Thank you for not messing around, sir. Thank you for just 
you know, just fold and just move on to the next one. You know, there'll be another opportunity that that'll be better suited for you. Like soon. You don't have to have every one. Uh, start the party. If you want a good time, better call me. Meet me on the dance floor with your body. I can tell you when the mood on me. Hey! Log fame them here I come. What's that? Log fame them here I come. Is that what you think's gonna happen? <laughs> I'll take the under. <laughs> Hello! I want some, want some more. Hey, let's go. Hey, I feel amazing. This is your shot. This is it. That might work. If you would have shoved there, I would have walked to the cage to buy you more chips. Like I wouldn't, you wouldn't even have to deal, do the embarrassing walk. Like I'd do that for you. Yeah. Oh, here we go again. I refuse to utter the name of this hand. You know what it is. The law says I must open it from the button, so I make it $30 to go. The big blind calls. 366 six with two clubs. Oh, what a surprise. The big blind, probably sensing my disgust with my current situation, donks into me on this flop for $20. I call. The term bringing the jack of clubs probably helps every other hand in the deck except mine. The big blind checks, as do I. When the five of spades river appears and the big blind leads for $40, I can't get rid of this ridiculous hand fast enough. Next hand, please. Run up on me, show me what you like, you can get in no fee. Actually, you looking at a beast, you ain't never seen nobody like me. Talk to your knees, she knows all the deeds. Lights out, one time for the freaks. Mike's out, I'll be yelling in the streets. Oh wow, now you heard it from me. Hey, hello, I want some, want some more. Hey, let's go. Hey, I feel amazing. In this hand, I find myself in a situation in which the button has opened to $30, and I'm holding ace-9 offsuit in the big blind. With the standard button opening range so wide, this is a pretty easy call. The flop of ace-jack-10 with two clubs is probably technically better for the button than myself, even with his wide opening range, as a good portion of my really strong hands, for example, aces or king-queen suited, would probably have three bet preflop. I check. He continues for $50, and that leaves us little choice but to just call. The turn three of clubs brings in the front door flush draw, but other than that, it's pretty disconnected from the rest of the board. Holding a club in my hand here is nice. Check. The button checks it back, so no new information is really exchanged on this street. The river pairs the 10, making some of his flop two pair combinations less likely. Torn between leading and checking here, we elect to check because the button doesn't have to have a made hand. He could just have 9-8, king-9, 4-5, all kinds of things. And if he doesn't have a made hand and wants to win this pot, then he only has one option, and that's to bet. So in other words, I'm attempting to pick off a bluff. If I lead here, there aren't a ton of hands that he's going to call me with that I beat. The button fires a $60 bet into the middle to which I quickly call. Do I lose here sometimes? Sure, that's gonna happen. In this instance though, he quickly tosses his hand into the muck. Jason, mm -hmm. um, my boyfriend said he knows you told me to say hi. Who's your boyfriend? Uh, Dylan. Oh, Dylan. Tall Dylan, Dylan. Yeah. yeah. And he said, don't make me look bad in the vlog. Now I got to make you look You shouldn't have told me about Dylan. Not yet. Now it's a lot. No, I like Dylan. He's good. Good guy. As the session continues, I begin picking up some hands. Nothing super special. Just raise and take it or see a flop and bet flop kind of things. Nothing vlog worthy. But things that definitely help the chip stack move in the vertical direction. 
in this next one, the Under the Gun 2 player opens to $30, and I look down at Ace-Queen offsuit. This isn't a snap 3 bet by any means. Early position opens represent a ton of strength, and this hand can get into a lot of trouble versus that range. That being said, I still raise $100. Raise. raise. The cutoff calls, and when action returns to the original opener, he calls as well. I catch a decent flop in ace three six with two spades in the under the gun two player checks. Easy C bet here and I make it $70. The cutoff folds and action is now back on the original opener and the tank begins. Man, he's thinking a while. What is this? You lost the hunks. Oh, are you out? I thought you were still in. Just me? I thought you still had a hand. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, no, you're good. I thought you were going deep into the tank. <laughs> Thanks, not that deep. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. He's got like a set of sixes. I'm in trouble. Oh. <laughs> I thought he was... <laughs> Financially, I won that one, but like emotionally, you, you destroyed me. You destroyed me there emotionally. Basically, the last hand of the night, our new friend from the previous night opens to $30 from under the gun, and I find a flat with pocket eights from the hijack. The big blind comes along. Three, five, six with two clubs. The big blind checks. The under the gun player bets $50, which is a bit on the large side and gives me a little pause but not enough to not come along on this board. The big blind folds. The turn 10 of diamonds puts two flush draws on board and she continues, $110. I could find exits here. I probably should find an exit here, but I talk myself into one more street. Firing that third bullet as a bluff, well, that's hard for most. If she checks the river, I probably just win. The river deuce of diamonds completes the backdoor flush and some straights. She reaches for chips, drops $330 worth of them into the middle, so and yeah, I'm done. Dude, you're in my shop. We're doing the whole session wrap up. You're in the shop. What the fuck are you trying to do? No, you can have it. Take it. Well, this is a throwback. Here I am at the Beach House, which is the old house. And it is called the Beach House because it is on Beach House Avenue in Northwest Vegas. If you're curious, you can look it up. Um, I'm obviously not at the Bellagio anymore. I have finished uh, today's session. I have zero clue how I'm gonna edit these last two sessions together because yesterday's session was pretty short and today's wasn't very long at all. Four, five and a half hours or so. I believe yesterday I left up a little over a grand, and today I left up like $550. Let's just call it that. Um, well, there wasn't really much to say about today's session. It was pretty, meh, things worked that should have worked. I held on with pocket eights uh, in one hand for one street too long, and run of the mill stuff. Yesterday, the game was much better. Uh, I just wasn't feeling myself. I was fighting like brain fog and lack of sleep and some other things. But over the last two days, actually over the last week, 
stellar results. Unfortunately for you guys, um, you didn't see two monster sessions uh, that I had earlier in the week. I wish I would have vlogged those. They were mwah, fantastical. Um, but with that, we're going to clean up this place a little bit and uh, we're going to get out of here. We're going to head back uh, to the other house and probably fire up the PS5 since I haven't done that in a while. So if you like the vlogs, you know, like the vlogs, subscribe, leave me a comment. I'll probably respond. And I think that's it. I think that's all I have to say. All right. Can't even see me. All right. Bye. 5.30 in the morning, early. We're already on the list at the Bellagio before 6 a.m. Yeah, I was born to be the greatest. Uh, yeah, I was born to be your favorite. Look, ma, I'm on the billboard. I made it. That's what I dream every day, so I say it. Yeah, I used to be broke, though. Money was so-so. Used to be loco. But I was born to be the realest. Yeah, yeah, I was born to be the illest. Because anything is possible. Uh, if you don't know, it got to go. We don't like different voices, so you must have a lot of them. Oh, I have all of them. All of them. Yeah. Yep. All of them. Yeah, uh, I'm about to, about to blow. Uh, I'm about to start the show. Yeah. You try to knock me down. You try to take my crown. But look at me now. Man, I just like looking at you. And this is like I paid 30 bucks to look at you, so I'm going to look. You try to knock me down. But I got up somehow. Yeah, look at me now. Yeah, look at me now. Look at me now. They have war over a thousand I saw it. Yeah. I saw it. Did I play it? Yes. Hey, you cannot stop me. You cannot stop me. That's what's up. I'm starving. I've been thinking about White Castles for two weeks. That's not gonna make you true, son. Anything is possible. If you don't know, it got to go. I'm about to, about to blow. I'm about to. You're fancy, dude. Like, we go on vacation, we go to like Henderson. He goes, France. JJ, JJ wants to be in the vlog. There he is. Yeah, my dream. Hey, you cannot stop me. You cannot stop me. No. Tis not always that mine recording strike true. On the first attempt, a miss may ensue. Twice, nay, thrice, I must lay voice upon mine art to capture the essence in truth to impart. You look ridiculous. <laughs> So, this session's over. Um, in your defense, it was in that hand, so like, yeah, so like, 